one two one two you know how we do and damn it has been a minute it is your boy bq with the b-side podcast number one podcast for the impact wrestling fan brought to you by the impact lounge we're gonna be talking some spoilers a little bit here for bound for glory so if that's not quite your speed go ahead and uh pause this video right now exit out and uh go do something else because we're going to be talking about the rumored Bound for Glory card. And this was something that, you know, I think most of us I think most of us are pretty familiar with it now. Most people have been clicking on it. I don't even usually entertain that kind of thing, but I was like, "You know what? Uh let's click on it. Let's see what let's see what's on here. Let's see what let's see what the rumors are about what's going to be on the big show." Now, when I was going to sit down and do this podcast, at first I wanted to talk about the Eddie Edwards open challenge and how I kind of think it's a bit of a dud but instead we're going to talk bound for glory here and I'm going to get into the open challenge a little bit just not as in depth as I planned on earlier but we're we're going to talk a BFG here so before we get into the rumored card what I think of it uh, let's pay some bills this episode of the b-side podcast is brought to you by every plate now if there's one thing in this world that I hate doing and that I suck at doing it's cooking but unfortunately that is the one thing that I'm in charge of every night in my household it was something I dreaded couldn't stand never looked forward to it until I found every plate I've been doing it for several weeks now and really really love it I'm talking about simple delicious dinners every night for my family we've gotten to the point where they really can't wait for dinner time to see what daddy is cooking now I'm not much of a chef but it comes with pretty easy recipes that take about 30 minutes to do. And I have a feeling it might be right up your alley as well. I'm going to be giving you $20 off your first order, which if you're making an order for two, it's damn near a free box where you just got to pay for shipping. But let me tell you, real simple, easy, delicious meals. Check out every plate in the description of this video today. All right, so let's get into this. This is the rumored Bound for Glory card. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's rumored because I don't, I don't, I don't know if we really know for sure this is what it is. But Fightful Select was the ones that reported this, and uh, you know, I think that you, they usually have quite a bit of integrity with that site, so I don't think they would put any false information out there. But um, as again, again, like I said, this is a spoiler field podcast so if that's not up your alley uh click off and and go do something else the biggest hole that i'm seeing right now with this potential card and we don't know that this this is probably not the final card i'm sure it's not is that i don't see sammy callahan on here i don't see ec3 on here and i don't see moose on here so i think we can safely assume that ec3 is probably going to take on moose at bound for glory and then Sammy Callahan, maybe they got something planned for him, but you know they've um, they kind of been flipping the script on Sammy to where he's he's a face now. So who the hell are you gonna have him feud with? Maybe they're struggling with finding somebody for all I know. Maybe he's gonna be in the Gauntlet Battle Royal. I guess we're gonna see. But let's start from the top here. Eddie Edwards. The rumor is that he will be defending against Ken Shamrock. Look, folks, I'm a content creator. I've been doing this for a while. Uh, I know quite a bit about search en- engine optimization and whether it's YouTube, Google, and you know, I do research before I do my uploads. No one's checking for Ken Shamrock right now. I think he was one of those signings that Impact thought was going to be a bigger deal than it really ended up being. But you know, he's I believe he's going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame at the show. So that's good. I don't it's weird to see him wrestle at that, but I guess Gail Kim did the same thing not too long ago. It's been a, over, it's a, not over, it's been close to a year that we've had Ken Shamrock as part of the company at this point. Um, maybe maybe exactly a year. And even though he's in phenomenal shape for his age, father time is undefeated. And for me, as a fan, I haven't really enjoyed the matches that he's been a part of so far. And I don't know what to expect out of this, if this is really what they're doing. I think this is really a classic case of the company giving us a main event that they think we want not what we actually want Um, I think they feel this is a bigger deal than it it probably is I don't know that 
either of these guys had the promotional chops to to really build something uh, that we really care about and we can get invested in. And I'm a big Eddie guy. He's definitely one of my favorite parts of the company, favorite on the roster. I was really happy that he won the world title. I was there when he won his first world title. Was there live and in person. Place was shocked. Uh, really cool moment. I think the only weakness to Eddie's game is 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 this chops, the promo skills. He talks. I, I would like to see him slow down a little. He talks a little fast. Um, I like to see him enunciate a little bit better. And I've I've mentioned this before. I used to be a mumbler, once upon a time. Um, but then I got into music. I got into uh, you know, podcasting. I had to do quite a bit of public speaking in the military. I still do. So I've had to kind of learn to enunciate my words. And that's one thing I like to see with with Eddie a little bit. I think he speaks a little too fast to where the sentences come out as half half words and half sentences. You, you guys know what I'm saying. Like, and me, and when we take on Sammy and Balfour, Lori, and when it's World Champ on the line, I'm going to find champ. You know, you feel me on that? That's the one weakness to his game. But Eddie is a big part of this company. I think he's a great guy to have the world title. But, you know, the world title open challenge that he's doing. I feel that there this is being done for two reasons. Number one, and this is the main reason. If you look back at Tessa Blanchard, Brian Cage, we, we haven't had a fighting champion in a while. Now, every time a babyface in Impact wins the world title... They always cut this promo, I'm going to be a fighting champion. You know, Rich Swan, Tessa Blanchard, Brian Cage, Jordan Grace, they all, I'm going to be a fighting champion. And no one ever really is. That's why I'm, uh, it cracked me up when they asked Moose if he was going to be a fighting champion. He said, hell no. Eddie actually is a fighting champion. So that is props you got to give him and, and give what they're doing with the world title. But do these matches feel special to you? They're just wrestling matches with no creative behind them whatsoever. The second part of this is that Cody was doing an open challenge for a while, and it was going really well. And I think they were trying to do their version of that, but it wasn't near as good because Cody was facing, um, you know, there there's shock, shock value to his. You know, he's facing independent stars, you know, popular independent guys. Uh, there, there's promos being cut. Um, and then he was facing guys into the lower to mid card. To where, you know, at first, Eddie kicked this thing off, taking on Trey. And it was cool. And then he went right into Sammy Callahan. And then he went to Brian Myers, which is cool. And then he went into Rob Van Dam. And next week, it's Eric Young. Like, it, it's... In some of these matches, they're they're giving away a lot of the uh, main, a lot of main event cal- caliber matches for free. And... This is my personal opinion, and I, I feel pretty strong about this opinion. But if you have a world title match that opens the show, or it's in the middle of the show, to me, that means that the company does not have that much confidence in the champion or the match. Because a main event is a main event. If you, you, you When you try to say, well, we're starting off with a main event, no. That's just not how it works. They did it with Drew Galloway. You know, he was always defending the title in the opening, you know, first match of the night. So the North versus the Guns was, that was the main event. That's what they felt was the main event. You know, they didn't feel that Eddie versus RVD was a, was a main event match. But I do feel like they're giving us matches for free that they don't need to. An open challenge works when you're wrestling the Trays and you're wrestling the Brian Myers. Maybe you're wrestling Rohit one week. Maybe you're wrestling one of the Deaners. You're wrestling guys that lower, you know, lower to mid car guys, and you're you're elevating them. That's what you know. When years ago John Cena did his, I was still a WWE fan at the time, and I really liked that portion of the show because he was always bringing some guy in that you would never think would wrestle him, and they would put on this good match. And, and and here to me, I feel like they're just giving away, uh, they're giving away a couple matches that could have been pay per view matches, you know, giving away Eddie versus Sammy, 
And, you know, some people think, oh, they're going to revisit this feud, this blood feud. Like, there's there's no blood at this point. You know, if you haven't been watching lately, Sammy's uh, basically a baby face now. So I don't think they can revisit that. At least not anytime soon. Because there was a story behind that, and that story's done. So I think, for me, this world title match is, is the, the, the open challenge is weak. Um... Would you ever would would they ever kick off the show with Tessa Blanchard defending the world title? Absolutely not. That's just my personal opinion. I'm gonna get off that soapbox. Get back to the Bound for Glory card. Ken Shamrock. I I really have very little interest in it, just because you know when when Shamrock was taking on Moose, Moose carried that thing. Moose was cutting these promos and doing these segments, and and damn, I was invested in it. That was like my favorite part of the build to Bound for Glory last year. But just because Moose was carrying it wasn't really what, you know, Ken was bringing to the table. Moose was able to bring a little humor to it. I don't think that these two guys got the chops to give us a world title build that we care about. I wouldn't be surprised if the knockouts don't main event Bound for Glory. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that right here and now. That's my gut. Is that the knockouts are going to main event it? I don't think they're going to go off the show, off the air with this show. I mean, with this match. My opinion, but this main event, uh, at least he's not taking on Tommy Dreamer, but it does nothing for me. A match that does do something for me is Deanna Perazzo versus Kylie Ray. I think this is what we expected was going to happen. Uh, they're kind of keeping Kylie Ray out of the the picture right now because she's trapped in Wrestle House, which which is fine. Um, but this has the the potential to be a really good, genuine heel versus baby face feud. I mean, white meat, baby face that everyone likes against, you know, a heel that we can get behind booing. Even though we, we like her too, but we can get behind her booing. Both these girls can absolutely work in the ring, so the match is going to be a show stealer. I mean, Deanna versus... Jordan Grace, those are show stealers. This one's going to be even better. That's why I, I got a gut feeling that this is going to main event the show, that they're going to go off the air with this. One thing, we, another hole we're not seeing here in this card is we're, we were assuming they were going to return uh, to the Knockouts Tag Team Championships, and they seemed like they were building that for a while, and now they've seemed to back off it quite a bit. And maybe it was something where they were trying to build Slammiversary. Like when they tease Aces and Eights. Like Aces and Eights is not coming back. That was just a teaser of who's going to show up at Slammiversary. So maybe they were trying to tease this as well. It's in their best interest to bring these titles back. And Bound for Glory would be the perfect place to do it. Based off this card, we don't know if that's happening or not. But this Knockouts singles match looks on point. The tag team championship match, I am not a fan of multi-team matches. I guess every match is a multi-team because it's one-on-one, but I'm, I'm just not. But it's it's rumored the Motor, Sh- Miss, excuse me, the Motor City Machine Guns will be defending their belts against the North, the Good Brothers, and Ace Austin and Madman Fulton, which is a pairing that I like. But this goes to show what I was saying... What I've been saying for a while is that the company didn't have any faith in OVE, Desi Hit Squad, uh, Reno Scum, uh, TJP Falaba, the Deaners, Triple XL. These are all teams that some are still together, some are not. But the company has shown no faith in putting them in matches against the North. And few, well, let's just say feuds with the North, because TJP and Falabad did take them on. You know, the North was going to wrestle uh, uh, Willie Mack and, and Rich Swan, But it goes back to what I was saying. The North only wrestled the Rascals and teams that you just threw together. And they, they were building for a long time. Well, they're running through the division. They're really not, because they didn't have feuds with any of these teams. But I don't think the company believed in them. And this shows that they don't because there's four teams in this match and none of those teams I listed are in it. 
again, it's a team he threw together, Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. And then the good brothers, the North, the Guns. So the North have lost two matches thus far versus the Machine Guns, but they're back in the world title picture. The Good Brothers, you knew this was coming. I would have rather got the North versus the Good Brothers and then Ace Austin and Fulton versus the Machine Guns. I just, I, I, this match is going to be a bunch of people in the ring at once, a bunch of spots, a bunch of near falls. It just doesn't do anything for me as a fan. It might do something for you, and if it does, awesome. I'm not saying this is going to be a bad match. But that that just me being an old school wrestling guy where the champion or champions took care of one challenger or set of challengers at a time. You didn't just have to throw a bunch of people in there, you know, to create intrigue, to to rush things. I I would like to see them just handle their feuds one by one. So for me, uh, um, I'm not super excited about that. One thing I'm one match I am excited about though. On here, Rich Swan versus Eric Young. I think we thought Eric Young was going to get the world title shot. And that was another thing with the world title open challenge was that he was also feuding with Eric Young. So you knew at no point he was going to lose the, the championship. And the other point I was going to make about opening a show with a world championship match is that you know the mat- the title wasn't going to change hands because it would be a talking point through the rest of the show. It would overshadow the show and it overshadow the main event. So you just know it's not going to change hands right away but swan versus eric young is building a is the best story being built thus far of anything that they're doing i thought rich swan did an excellent job with his retirement speech and eric young has been doing an excellent job as a heel you know when he was in impact before my son was a little younger so he doesn't even though he went to shows he doesn't remember him that well but now he's a little older, Eric Young's back, and we were watching the show, you know, Emergence Night 2, and he just, he's like, well, you know, basically I really don't like that guy. You know, he's definitely an unlikable heel. He plays that role very well. And much like, you know, Deanna and Kylie are going to have this great heel-face dynamic, this match has that too. And this is one of the matches that I, I think people aren't going to talk about as being a show stealer, but, but I think it has that potential because... We're invested on where they're going with the, the story. You know, with the uh, the attacking Swan and the, you know, to where at the point he had to retire and all that. This has potential to really be the match of the night. But it's gonna it's not going to be one people are talking about in that voice. There's going to be a six-way for the X Division Championship. I have concerns that they're rushing, uh, that they're hot-potatoing this title right now. I hope not. And, you know, I'm a Rohit guy. I'm a big Rohit guy. You got no idea. But I I had a hard time believing he was going to defend this title one-on-one at Bound for Glory because they don't put him on any of the pay-per-view cards up to this point. Well, they haven't put him on any. So he's going to defend his title. Uh, granted, he's still the champion at the time. And it's going to be a six-way. It's probably a lot of the same characters we see you know, I'm sure there's going to be, uh, you know, uh, Chris Bay. We're probably going to get Willie Mack, you know, one of the rascals. You know, I think it's it's pretty – I don't know who the, all the, the participants are going to be, but I think it's going to be a lot of usual suspects. What if we see Sammy Callahan in this? That would be interesting. I have a feeling he's in the gauntlet. But this match here, I, I, I don't see how they can build a compel, compelling storyline up to it. It would have been compelling if they dragged out the Rohit and Chris Bay storyline for a while. Oh, I'm sure TJP will be in this match too. But if they were able to drag that out a little bit, I think they could have built uh, something special up to this match. But they blew their load early on it, so we'll see what happens. And then the other match they have here is the Call Your Shot Gauntlet or Rumble, Battle Royal, whatever you want to call it. And I was at Bound for Glory yesterday, last year, not yesterday, last year. I was there live. And this match was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun to watch. We got some surprises. We got some some big pops. We got some cool moments. The the only downside of the match itself is that you knew Eddie Edwards was going to win. 
And then I even for another downside, they didn't announce anybody but Eddie and Shira and maybe one or two other people, but I really thought from a social media marketing standpoint they should have announced one person a day up to the pay-per-view. And you can say, okay, there's going to be some surprises, but they built nothing with this, and I expect them to do the same for it to have very little build. As far as the conclusion of the match, the right person won with Eddie, but the, 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 the trophy meant nothing. He never cashed it in. You know, he never called his shot. He had that weird feud with Elgin where was it for the trophy? Was it not? We don't know. None of the match graphics said it was. I think uh, Josh Matthews might have said once or twice that it was, but it wasn't. We don't really know for sure. We just kind of assumed. And then he never really did call his shot because then at the pay-per-view he was supposed to take on Tessa with and, and Elgin was involved too. So... He, he didn't get a one-on-one there. And then he, at the next paper, he has anniversary. he still didn't get a one-on-one. So what was the point of him winning the gauntlet? Because everyone else got the same opportunities he got. So this I feel like this has the opportunity to kind of be a money-in-the-bank type of show. but I mean, type of match, but they don't deliver it that way. You know, we should be real invested in who's going to get this trophy and who's, who's going to win. You know, but we're not. I hope that they do a better job with that this year. Because the match was fun. The match was really entertaining. And I think some of the reviews, the review sites were like, oh, this match was a waste of time. And they gave it, you know, the shit on it. I thought it was cool. I, I liked it. I like doing the countdown and, and the, you know, whole rumble thing. I always like when they do gauntlets. Maybe we'll get some surprises with it this year. But that's my thing. Whoever wins, I want it to matter. I want them to actually call their shot. Because after he won that, they weren't like, oh, you know, they didn't build any... Uh, suspense with it, like, oh, when, when's he gonna call your shot? I mean, he just didn't. It was, it was, it became a prop after that. So I really hope that's better. But that's that's everything that the, it's rumored so far. Eddie versus Shamrock, not not much interest in it. Deanna versus Kaylee, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my daughter's name's Kaylee. Kylie, I got interest in that. The Guns versus the North versus the Good Brothers or Brothers versus ASOS and a Fulton, I think will be good. I just at personally have no interest in it mostly you probably do swan versus eric young i have a lot of interest in that the six way for the x division i've got some interest because i know it's going to be a fun match same with the call your shot gauntlet i think it's going to be a fun match it's just will it will it mean anything at the end of the day but this is a good mainstay for bound for glory it just has to mean something it has to be important so that's what i've got for you guys today thanks for checking out the b-side podcast uh can't wait to hear your thoughts on these matches, you know, we already know the Bound for Glory is never Slammiversary. Slammiversary always out, outshines it quite a bit. And I would say that that's probably going to be the case again this time around. I would have loved to see the Knockouts Tag Team titles return because that would have given it, you know, a, a big talking point, a big story that people would have real interest in. And you could even main event the show with it. Maybe it's going to happen. We don't know. But as I said, I do think the knockouts are going to main event the show in one way, shape, or form. I don't think it's going to be Eddie and and um, Shamrock. I think that's a horrible main event. So um, we'll see what happens. But uh, Bound for Glory, let's hope for a good show still. Um, let's hope for some good build on television. We'll see what happens. I will talk to you soon. Why? Because I'm out. <laughs> Peace.